guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my February wrap up. I feel like we literally blinked and February was over. Like I feel like January just stretched out and then February is just done. Like I feel like I just uploaded my January wrap up. It's crazy. So it might seem like I just posted my January wrap up because I probably did just post my January wrap up but here we go. Round two with February wrap up right now. So I read five books this month. Um, five and a half technically. I'm hoping six by the time March actually hits. I'm hoping that I can finish the book that I'm reading currently before February 28th happens. But if I don't, I read and finished a total of five books for the month of February. The first book that I read for the month of February was Mail Order Revenge by Angela K. Couch and I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is a short, cute, adorable historical novella about a young lady named Elizabeth Landvig and she feels that the Forsbergs uh, stole her family's money. They were business partners in New York and all of a sudden her dad went into debt and her dad lost the business and he blamed everything on the Forsberg. So she had this hatred and this need for revenge for this family for years because she felt they left her destitute when her parents died and she had no money. So flash forward a couple years, she sees a mail order bride ad in the newspapers for a young gentleman by the name of Axel Forsberg. And she realizes that this is the one and only son of the man who ruined her life. So she answers the ad and she goes with the idea that she is bent on revenge and she is going to ruin these people's lives and then she's going to get her money and she's going to leave. In the end, it doesn't really work out that way because she quite possibly falls in love with our main character. And I mean, I can't fault her any because he is... I mean, he was great. Uh, he broke horses for a living. Like, hello, yes, Jesus. I'm all about a rancher. Like, yes, no, just me. Okay, well, I'm all for it. Love it. I was all for him. He was sweet. He was such a gentleman, and he was innocent. So, I won't tell you if the dad was innocent or not. You have to figure that out for yourself. This was an ebook. It was a quick novella. It was beautifully written. I absolutely loved it. Um, I've seen a couple mixed reviews because they felt like it was a very quick read and like nothing really happened and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? It's a novella. A lot has to happen in a short amount of space. I loved it. It was great. And I'm so happy that I finally was able to read it. It was great. I loved it. You should definitely check it out. And the cover is gorgeous. So there's that. The next book that I read in the month of February is Hearts Entwined, a novella collection with Karen Whitmire, Mary Connolly, Regina Jennings, and Melissa Jaggers. First off, I will say um, this collection is my everything. I love these authors. It, I was so excited to find out that they were working together again because I do have their other novella when they work together. And again, they just blew me away. They're wonderful, wonderful authors. I rated this a 4 out of 5 stars, and I reviewed it on the blog two weeks ago. Okay, gotta do some math. I reviewed it on the blog two weeks ago. Overall, I really did enjoy the story, the stories. I think Regina Jennings was my absolute favorite. I loved the characters, and it was just funny, and like there were camels involved, so... I mean, how can I not love it? Melissa's was so cute, so sweet, innocent and pure and just, I just get that when I read her writing, doesn't matter when or where. I just, her stories are just so sweet to me. M Mary's was hilarious. It was great. I loved seeing characters that I've seen in a previous series. And of course, Karen's was as wonderful as always. You ended our Harper's Station series. We say goodbye to the characters, and honestly, I'm kind of sad. It's bittersweet to see him end. But overall, I really did enjoy the stories, and the 
stories in themselves did not cross over. The authors did not work together in collab that way, but they each had a tie or a knot thread running through the stories, and that is what made it the Hearts Entwined collection. And each story is a part of a series, which, in my honest opinion, you don't have to. Like, they can all be considered standalones, but obviously you get a way better experience if you read the series from beginning to end. The next book I read was called The Billionaire's Sweet Valentine. And this is technically not Christian fiction. It is a clean, sweet romance. And let me tell you, it was so sweet. I loved it. Um, this book was super cheesy. It was super ooey gooey and... Yes, I was so for it. I love my books cheesy. I love cheesy romances. I love ooey gooey lovey dovey. Totally unrealistic in this world. I enjoy those books because I know that it's fiction and that's why I pick up fiction. But, and it's an unpopular opinion in quite a few places, but it's my opinion and I'm going to stick to it. I enjoy unrealistic fiction ooey gooey romances. There, I said it. But this just totally did not disappoint in that category. It was so cheesy, so cute. And this is following Penny Morell and Preston Ames. And Penny is a owner of a sweet shop. And Preston comes in every single day to get a dozen donuts for his construction workers because he owns a construction business. And Penny is totally crushing real hard on him. And of course, I mean, he thinks she's cute too. Penny's family is trying to sabotage her business and she needs money to take care of some stuff. So she sees on in a newspaper or on TV, I can't remember what it was, but this magazine in the story is hosting this Valentine's Day couples contest. And you send in a picture and then if you win, you send a video and if you win that, you, you know, you go through the stages of this contest. So. She's currently single, but she talks Preston into giving it a whirl with her to see if they can make it to the contest. And that's all I'm going to tell you. All I'm saying is you need to pick it up. It is so cute. It's by Laura L. Walker. I rated it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I loved it all. Again, there were some ends that kind of wrapped up quickly, but it was a short story. It wasn't a full-length novel. So I wasn't expecting this massive plot that had to be written and wrapped up perfectly in however many words are in a novella. So I went into it not really expecting a whole, whole lot because I've never read anything by this author. All I knew is it was Valentine's Day, it was Hallmarky, and it was cheesy, and I was all for it. And let me tell you, perfect Valentine's Day read, and it's even a great read all year round. It was so, so cute. And I would definitely recommend picking it up. Also, again, cover. Adorable. The next book that I read in the month of February was actually a little out of the box for me. I know, crazy. Quite a few of these books were this month. But that was Why I Hate Green Beans by Lindsay Ray. And this is a memoir. And it was great. First of all, I saw the cover and knew I wanted to read the book because of the title and the color and just everything about it. But then I read the back and I read the synopsis and I realized that I needed to read this book. And it's just something about it, um, it was kind of a fluke, I'm not going to lie, and I feel like this is something that should be shared because in my mind it's kind of a little bit of a testimony because it was great. Um, Revel did send this to me, I've been blessed to receive some books from Bethany and Revel. So this was a book that they sent me and they sent me the email about the nonfiction catalog. Here's the thing. I don't read nonfiction normally. Um, I'm trying to do better, but I just normally don't do it. So I am not signed up for their nonfiction newsletter. So I don't receive it. But out of the blue in January, I received an email from Revel with the nonfiction email, the catalog, and I also got the fiction one. So 
I received it and I read this one and realized I never would have heard about it. I never would have looked into it. I never would have heard this. I never would have read this story that I needed when I read it if somehow, someway that email had not come to me. So it was so amazing because I read this and no, I have not gone through everything that Lindsay has gone through. She has lived a longer life than I have and she's lived a completely different life than I have. But what was so amazing about this book in my opinion was that I could take the message that she was giving and what she was saying and what was she was writing through the story and her story, I was able to take it and apply it to my life and my situation. And to me, that's a great nonfiction book. That's a great book overall. And I rated this a five out of five star just because I really need it. And I know a ton of women and a ton of people who could definitely, definitely, definitely excel and just get a lot out of this book if they read it. I, again, love the cover because I am a fellow hater of the greenest Venus. It's disgusting. Can't gag it down. It's ooh. Anyways, so I was all for it. And I just really needed to hear the story that Lindsay wrote. And I'm so thankful that she wrote it. So I definitely, definitely, definitely would recommend it to ladies who feel insecure and ladies who just need to know that they're not alone and need to know that it's okay to feel that way. And she handled it in a wonderful, classy, hilarious manner and it just spoke a lot to her character and I'm just, it was great. I loved it. My review for it is of course on the blog if you want further detail because I did go into a little bit more detail on there. Please check it out. Link of course will be in the description but this is great. It was definitely a good read for February. The last book that I finished and read for the month of February is Frontier Matchmaker Bride by Regina Scott. And this is book eight in her final book for the Love Inspired Historical Line and her Frontier Bachelor series. I rated this a four out of five stars and my review and maybe a special interview <laughs> is on my blog today about this book so you can read all of my thoughts and all of my greatness on this book because it does come out in March. So. If you want to hear about it, if you want to know about it, check out the link, check out my blog because it's there. If you want to hear more and you want to talk and you want to read what Regina has to say, check out my blog, interview is there. That's beside the point. This book is following Beth Wallen and Deputy Hart McCormick. Beth is a very, very successful Seattle matchmaker. She's set up all of her brothers and quite a few of her friends in previous books, which is books one through seven. And now it's her story. And her job, she's wanting to get into the society, and her job is to match the deputy with his perfect, perfect match. And she decided to take the job, even though she's been in love with him for, well, ever, it seems like. But he totally turned down her suit and totally rejected her. But she felt like he deserved to find his perfect match. And it just so happened that she was his perfect match in the end. It was very cute. I love Regina's style. I love her writing. And I loved the banter between the two and how stubborn he was. But I loved Beth's character as well. It was just beautifully written, beautifully done. I have almost all of them. I might be missing like one or two. But now, since really reading this, I want to know more about the characters. I want to read their love stories. So I will be picking those up at some point. Of course, they can be standalones. But if you want the full amazing experience, it is the best to read books from beginning to end. But this book was beautifully written, rated 4 out of 5 stars. And please check out my review for it if you would like to know because... I have lots of thoughts on this, lots of thoughts. <laughs> and the book that I am currently reading and hopefully will be finished by the end of February, but we'll see, is A Passionate Hope by Jill Eileen Smith. And this is Hannah's story. This is book number four in her Daughters of the Promised Land series. I have not read book one, two, or three. I do know for a fact that book three is Ruth's story. Um, but I'm not seeing character overlap. I'm just thinking that she's like 
the daughters of the promised land and then she's taking you know the daughters of the promised land and writing their story so i don't think it's technically like an overlapping series but i'm currently on page 170 and i'm hoping to have it finished i'm not so sure i'm having a really hard time reading this um i feel like i've read something by jill before and i feel like i enjoyed it but something about this book i'm just i don't know if i'm not in the mood for it or if i'm just not caring for her writing style but i'm just having a rough time i'm hoping that the further i get into it it'll get a little better and it'll progress a little quicker but i don't know i've always loved the story of hannah so I was really excited to read it and I'm thinking that it would be great. So I'm hoping there's redemption down the road for this book. Um, the review will be up at some point and you can actually hear my complete thoughts on the matter because right now, I'm sorry to say, I don't have a whole, whole lot. I can't really form an opinion since I'm only halfway through. But right now, if you do want my opinion at this moment, like, it's mediocre. It's average. So, again, nothing against the author. It just could be I'm not in the mood or her writing style and my reading style don't exactly click. So, we'll see. I don't know. But the cover's beautiful and I am excited to finish reading it so that I can review it. Yeah. Hopefully we'll finish this by February 28th. We'll see. No promises. So I read a total of three paperback books this month and two ebooks and half of another paperback. Overall, I had a um, kind of sad reading month. I had a really hard time reading. Like I was, time was getting away from me and I just didn't want to pick up some of the books that I was reading. It was just, you know, a little rough, a little choppy this month. And it took me forever to get into reading in the month of February. I don't know. It was ridiculous. On top of that, I am currently a live-in nanny. That was a life update that I was talking about on my Instagram a couple days ago. So I am currently working and living with a family from Monday to Saturday night. And I'm there all week. And I'll be there for a couple months. So my reading might get... A little smaller <sighs> it's just kind of sad but I will of course be making sure all my commitments for my blog and going to try for my YouTube channel they will be I'm gonna get a schedule we're gonna work it out and I'm going to learn the art of pre-filming so hopefully once I get into this in March and it just kind of rolls into some things that my reading will pick up my schedule will get into a normal pace and I'll be able to be reading six and seven and eight books a month again at least because I know I can do more but I won't go too big right now I know it's gonna be a learning curve for a while so all you mamas out there I applaud you all you babysitters and nannies I applaud you guys you guys are amazing especially when you can read on top of it I love you guys you are amazing so I hope you guys enjoyed my video today, and if you are interested in any of the books, of course, you can check out my full reviews either on my blog or Goodreads if you would like to hear more and more and more of my thoughts, because I talk a lot here, but I mean, I don't always say what I want to say. Sometimes I say it in my blog or my reviews, you know, you get the thing. All my links are in the description box below if you'd like to check out my blog, it's for love Christian fiction .com. And if you'd love to check out my Instagram too, it's for the love of Crush and Fiction. I'd love to have you. I'd love to talk to you. I'm a little more active on there throughout the week. And yeah, I think that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.